Hi everyone! Welcome back to Science at Home and for today, we're going to be exploring the different patterns of non-Mendelian genetics. So as the name implies, the term non-Mendelian meaning these are the laws of inheritance that were not made by Gregor Mendel. So let us try to look on some examples. So the first one is incomplete dominance. So in terms of incomplete dominance, so we have two weak dominant traits. So what happens is that they tend to blend. So this is present in terms of plants. So let us have some example. So in carnations, both of the red and the white flowers are incompletely dominant with one another. So the red is represented by capital RR and the white is represented by the capital WW. So in terms of the carnation plant, so the hybrid color is pink, so represented by the RW. The pink color is the combination of the two weak dominant traits, the red and the white flowers. So what will happen if there will be a cross between two pink flowers, so in which this is the RW and RW. So let us look on the Pan square. So RW and RW. So we will have this type of cross. So as you can see for the genotypic ratio, so we have one RR, which is the 25%. So remember, every grid in the Pan square is represented as 25%. Then we have two RW, so that is 50%. And we have one WW, which is also 25%. So for the phenotype, let us look on the genotype itself. So since we have one RR, therefore we will have also one red. Okay, then since we have RW, which is two, that is also two for pink, which is also 50%. And we have one WW, which is the white, which is also 25% since it is one. Okay, let us proceed in terms of codominance. Now, codominance, on the other hand, is when there are two strong dominant traits. So, if you have two strong dominant traits, what happens is that both of the alleles are expressed. So, this is present on animals. So, let us have some example in terms of the cattle colors. So, the red and the white coat colors in cattle are co-dominant with each other, in which the hybrid coat is the roan. So the roan is the representation for both the red and the white colors of the cattle. So what will happen if there will be a cross between one red and one white cattle? So let's try to look. Okay, so as you can see, so in, the, in terms of the pan square, so we have the RR and the WW. So doing the test, Okay, so we have four RWs in which this represents 100%. And remember, RW, as mentioned in the problem, is that it is the one that decodes for the roan colored cattle. So therefore, it has a 100% probability of there will be having a roan colored cattle. Now, let us have this visual representation on the difference between incomplete dominance and codominance. So in terms of incomplete dominance, example in terms of the camellia flowers. So in terms of incomplete dominance, you should have weak dominant traits. So if you will have weak dominant traits in terms of the red and the white, so you will tend to form pink colored flowers of springs. However, if the red and the white colored of the flowers will be strong dominant traits, therefore its offspring will result on the combination of red and white. So that is for codominance. Okay, so let us now proceed in terms of multiple alleles. Now, as the name implies, the term multiple alleles, okay, meaning many. Okay, so therefore, there are three or more alleles of the same gene that code for a single trait. So best example of this is the different blood types in humans. Now, as you can see, the blood type in humans are determined by three alleles. So it can be either A, B, or O, in which both the A and B are dominant traits. Actually, they are co-dominant with one another. Meanwhile, the type O is recessive. So as you can see, what's the difference between all of these blood types? So the blood type A contains the antigen A. Meanwhile, blood type B contains the antigen B. Meanwhile, blood type A contains the combination of both antigens A and B. Meanwhile, blood type O does not contain any antigen at all. Actually, that antigen is represented as an allele with the capital letter I. So the capital letter I represents for an antigen and it is indicated as either A or B. And it can be represented as well as small letter I, meaning there is no antigen at all. In terms of blood types A and B, it can be either a homozygous or a heterozygous blood type. So if you're talking about a heterozygous, meaning it is a combination of both the antigen and no antigen. So that is, for example, capital IA and small letter I. And let's have capital IA. So if there will be both, so that will be homozygous. So what will happen if there will be a heterozygous blood type A and type B between 
uh, the cross. So, what happens right here, since it is heterozygous, so therefore, it will be a test cross between capital IA. So, as you can see, it contains both of the antigen and no antigen. Okay, because it's represented by capital letter I and small letter I. So, if there will be for heterozygous type A and B, so is there a probability of having an offspring with blood type O represented by two small letter I? So, let's do the Punnett square. So, first, separate, let us separate the gametes. So, as you can see, we'll try to do the cross. So, capital I, A, and B will result to both. Okay, then will be a combination for the others. So, let's try to determine the genotypic ratio. As you can see right here, so we have one, capital I, A, and B. So, that is the same other genes. So, we have the capital I, A, small i, and we have the uh, capital I, B, and small i, and two small letter i's. So, in, in which all of these are represented by one different squares itself. Okay? So, if there will be one representation for each, so therefore they will decode as 25% each. So capital I A and capital I B is type A B, since it's a combination of the, of the two. Okay, then capital I A and small i will be for type A, but it's heterozygous. Okay, same goes with type B, capital I B, small i. Okay, and two small letter i so that is for type o so therefore in this problem there is a probability of having an offspring or a child with blood type o now let us proceed in terms of sex link traits now in terms of sex link traits what happens here is that these are the genes for traits that are only located on the x chromosome simply because that the chromosomes in terms of the humans are determined by either the x and the y chromosomes so, but before that, let us always remember that in terms of X-linked alleles, it always shows up in males whether it can be dominant or recessive. So it can only show for one X chromosome. So therefore, males have XY and female have XX. Okay, how is sex determined in humans? Okay, so remember that humans have 46 chromosomes in which it is represented through 23 pairs. Okay, in which each pair contains two chromosomes. So the first 22 pairs are known as the autosomes in which all of them are homologous. So homologous meaning they are the same. However, the 23rd pair or the sex chromosome is somewhat different with them. It's simply because that it determines the sex itself. As you can see right here, so the 23rd pair okay, in male is represented as XY. Meanwhile, the sex chromosome or the 23rd pair in females is represented as both capital letter X. Okay, let us look at this. What do you think is the probability of having an offspring or of a male or a female or a boy or a girl? Okay, so let us try to look. So it's a representation between X and, and XY. So therefore, if we'll try to look in the Punnett square, okay, so it will result to this. So as you can see, there are two XX uh, offspring, so therefore, that represents 50% XX. Meanwhile, the probability of having a male offspring is XY, okay? So therefore, that is also 50%, okay? Simply because that who determines the sex of the child, remember it always the father. It's because the male requires the Y chromosomes, and the Y chromosome determines the sex of the offspring. If there is a Y chromosome, therefore it is a male. If there's no Y chromosome, therefore it is a female. All right. Okay, so sex link traits are examples for different genetic disorders, color blindness, hemophilia, or the scenario in which blood does not clot, and pattern baldness, especially for males when they grow up. So let's say a female that has a normal vision is a carrier for color blindness. Remember, ah? so it is normal. She's normal. However, she carries the trait. Okay. And she marries a man or a male with a normal vision. So remember, as, uh, as indicated in the problem, so the normal vision is symbolized by capital letter N. Meanwhile, color blindness is cap represented by small letter N. So if we'll try to look at the possible cross of the genes, so therefore it will be capital N, small n. As you can see, the female is represented as both X, okay? And for the male, it is normal, so capital N, okay? But X is only in the X because remember, the traits are only expressed in the X chromosomes and not in the Y. So let's try to look at the Punnett square. So if we'll try to plot, 
the test will look like this. So let us try to determine what are the possible phenotypes. So the first one, so we have a normal vision female because it is represented by two capital letter N on X. Okay, because X and X are female. And another example, so another trait, so one normal carrier female, capital N, small n. Okay, so therefore, she has a normal vision, but look, she serves as a carrier for the trait, which is the color blindness. Okay, and we have one normal vision male. So as you can see, he contains the capital letter N, which is the normal vision, but represented by the Y. So therefore, he is a male. Okay, and one colorblind male, as you can see right here. So there's a 25% percentage probability of having this genetic disorder. However, always remember that sex-linked traits are very recessive in nature, mostly. Okay, and in terms of determining different traits, okay, whether it can be dominant or recessive, it can be best represented through a pedigree analysis. Now, the pedigree analysis is considered as the graphic representation of how traits are passed from one or from parents to the offspring. Now, as you can see, it is symbolized by various shapes and lines. So let us try to determine how is it made. So the square is represented for the male, okay, and the circle is represented for the female. Okay, then the horizontal lines, okay, represents, meaning there's a marriage between the two. So as example for this, a female marries a male. Okay, then it can have also vertical lines and brackets in which it represents parents to offspring, then, so the first one is that no shade, meaning there's no trait. Okay, then with shade has the trait. And the half shade, meaning they are only considered as carriers. So that concludes our episode for today. This is your Sir Dave saying keep safe and always have fun learning science at home. Goodbye!